Are you aware that most Americans are paying an extra $680 a month just for stuff right now than they were just two years ago? According to Fox Business, inflation is falling, but Americans are still paying an extra $680 a month due to high prices. High inflation is still costing Americans an extra $680 a month compared with two years ago. It says inflation may be cooling, depends on where you are and what you're looking at, but the average American is still shelling out a lot more money for everyday necessities. The typical U.S. household needed to pay $205 more a month in October to purchase the same goods and services it did one year ago because of still high inflation, according to new calculations from Moody's Analytics Chief Economist Mark Zandi. And again, I'm just going to interrupt this whole article to say they want to tell us that inflation is at 2% now. Well, 2% after they jacked it up 20%, 40%, 50%, and in some cases over 100%. And they're also not counting food and electricity or energy in this inflation when they're talking about how much more you're paying or your, um, the what is it, the CPI? I think that's what it's called. It says here, Americans are paying an average 680 more each month compared with the same time two years ago. The an analysis suggests that while inflation has fallen from the highs of mid-2022, many families have yet to see material relief. Look at this. I mean, look at this chart over the decade. Do you see that massive? I mean, here, some of this makes sense. I like the drop there. I don't even know what that is. But this right here, that is absolutely ridiculous, right? So the Labor Department reported on Tuesday. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So that's what it is, y'all. I didn't even look. So the that is the CPI, right? The actual one. And then the dark blue is less food and energy. So right here, this includes food and energy. And you see how high up that went. This does not include food and energy. And this is here is what they always want to show us is, oh, no, inflation's not that bad. Look right here. But they forget to say, oh, yeah, by the way, look up there. Look, look up at the blue, the light blue, because that's the stuff that really affects you and I in the long run, energy and food, right? Now, the Labor Department reported on Tuesday that the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, a broad measure of the price of everyday goods, including gasoline, groceries and rents, was unchanged in October from the previous month. Prices climbed 3.2% on an annual basis. That's what they say. But when compared with January of 2021, shortly before the inflation crisis began, prices remain up a stunning 17.62%. So again, all day long, they're going to tell you in, our, in like headlines, oh, CPI is only 2%, inflation is only 2%. But what they mean when they say those kind of things is it's only 2% over where it was the month before, or they're finally getting it to calm down. They're not telling you that, oh, wait, technically it's still almost 18% over where it was last year. But since we're telling you it's only 2% over like last month, it makes it seem not as bad. They want it to seem not as bad, even though we all know it's a bunch of bull, right? Like it's inflation has been a biatch for a lot of people. Inflation has created severe financial pressures for most U.S. households, which are forced to pay more for everyday necessities like food and rent. The burden is disproportionately borne by low-income Americans whose already stretched paychecks are heavily impacted by price fluctuations. The consumer price index is still running well above the typical pre-pandemic rate, and the cost of necessities like food, gasoline, rent, and childcare remain far more expensive than they were just one year ago. Americans saw some reprieve in October as the cost of gasoline plunged and the price of used cars and trucks ticked lower, but many other price gains proved more persistent. Shelter costs, which were the largest contributor to core inflation last month, rose 0.3% on a monthly basis and are up 6.7% over the past year. Rising rents are concerning because higher housing costs most directly and acutely affect household budgets. The shelter component of inflation is still sticky high, said Rick Ryder, BlackRock's chief investment officer of global fixed income. Y'all know how I feel about BlackRock. Food prices, a visceral reminder of inflation for many Americans, also inched higher in October. Grocery costs rose 0.3% in October, up from 0.1% in September, and are up 2.1% compared with the same time last year. 
Consumers are paying more for staples like bread, breakfast cereal, beef and veal, pork, ham, chicken, milk, cheese, citrus fruits, and butter. Basically every freaking thing if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty of it. As they spend more on everyday goods, Americans are burning through their savings and are increasingly turning to credit cards to cover those basic expenses. Now, credit card debt surged to a new record high at the end of September, according to recent New York Federal Reserve data. In the three month period from July to September, total credit card debt rose to $1.08 trillion, an increase of $48 billion, an increase of $48 billion or 4.6% from the previous quarter, not the previous year, the previous quarter, according to the report, it marks the highest level on record in fed data backing back to, uh, data dating back to 2003 and the eighth consecutive annual increase. Here is the problem people. There's plenty of problems here, but here's the main problem. When they want to tell you that prices are up 2.1% compared to the same time last year, they are averaging the crap out of that. They're not telling you that chicken went up 60%, but you know, plums went up nothing. So they average those two things out and it helps a little bit. Or the price of okra dropped five cents while the cost of your milk went up $1.25. They're taking everything under the sun and they're averaging it out and they're going, it's only 2.1% uh, increase, but they're also averaging in the things that nobody cares about and that we don't buy. They're not, they're not giving you a true legit number because if they did, people would be so incredibly pissed off. There would be mutiny, plain and simple. And so they try to, it's just 2%. We're only up 0.3% in October from 0.1% in September. Yes. But again, you're averaging a hundred different things, knowing good and damn well that 10 out of those hundred things have risen more than a hundred percent, 150%. Some, some things have gone up over 200%, right? You guys leave comments. Let me know what you have seen that has gone, that, that you buy on a regular basis that you know for a fact has gone up more than this stupid little 2% they're trying to claim because we all know we could list almost everything under the sun in the grocery store and it's going to have gone up over 2%. Their numbers, I, I hear that they're trying, I, well, I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to make it seem more calming, less um, concerning for people, but that's not the way you should do things. You shouldn't just lie to people so that they feel better about things. You need to be upfront because people are thinking, oh, it's only a 2% increase. I don't need to save as much money, or I don't need to work as hard, or I don't need to budget this. Yeah, you do. Cause they're 2.1%. It's bullshit, plain and simple. They aren't giving you the full honest to goodness truth about what is actually happening with the prices in the grocery store prices, uh, for your electric bill. My electric bill is $165 this month and I barely use anything in this apartment. We use daylight, not regular lights. I cook, but I don't use the oven. I use the stove top and I use my rice cooker and, uh, I wash clothes obviously and stuff like that, but we don't use a lot. We don't use the AC or the heat. We pretty much leave everything off and maybe we'll have a floor fan or something going. So for our electricity bill to be $165, which doesn't seem like that much for a lot of people because we're just in an apartment. We're just in an apartment. It's tiny. It's 1400 square feet. My electric bill should be closer to hundred dollars. It should not be $165, but the cost of everything keeps going up. I'm paying more this month for electricity than I paid a year ago this same month. And I do the same things and I'm paying a good $55 more this month. Why? Why? right? Every time I go to the grocery store, it's more expensive than the last time I went to the grocery store. Why? Because inflation is real. Even though they want to sugarcoat it and make it seem like it's not a big deal. Inflation is real. And the people who are feeling it the most are you and me, not the 1%, not the ones who have all the money and they don't, the, that little bit of inflation, that 2.1 doesn't bother them. The ones who work hard on a daily basis, the ones basically keeping America running, in my opinion, are the ones who are feeling it the most. And I think it sucks. That's just me. I think it sucks. So I'm sorry to get a little agitated there. I didn't mean to get so, uh, but I, I can't help it sometimes. Like it absolutely like pisses me off that this is where we are with pricing and they try to say, oh, it's not that big a deal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is that big a deal. And it's not like they're going to bring it back down 18% to match what it was last year. It's not like they're going to do that to help us out. No profit over people. So there's that. Listen, Squirrel Trap. I appreciate y'all immensely for being here. There is a link to Patreon in the description if you guys want to support the channel. If not, no harm, no foul. I love you all. I hope you're having a fabulous Friday.
I'll probably see you again later. I got a lot of stuff I want to talk about today, so I'll probably see you again in a little bit. But for now, have a good day. Bye.